I love adding layers, to Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to actually show you guys how to remove any background image easily by using the tool Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so after you have your image in Photoshop, another way of actually inserting an image into Photoshop to edit is you can actually go up here to File, Open, pick the image that you want in your Finder, and then it will open up a new project for you. All right, so now that I have my new image right here, I can go over here to the right with layers, and I'll see that I just have a thing called background layer. So what I can do is I have this lock right here. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna actually click and drag that lock to the trash bin, because if something is locked, you usually can't get in. So we wanna be able to get into this image. <laughs> So I'm going to drag it to the garbage. All right, so now it's just a normal layer and I can do any types of edits I want to it. You could do some types of edits to it before, but this just allows you to have any full control access to this image. So in the newest feature of Photoshop, you actually have this tool right here called Object Selection Tool. So if you don't have the latest version of PowerPoint, I'm still going to show you a couple of workarounds on how you can delete that background image as well. But if you do have Photoshop, I would recommend just upgrading to the newest version because you're going to want to have this tool. It's extremely powerful. So go here to object selection, click on this tool right here, and then I'm going to zoom out by just doing alt and then scrolling outwards. If you have a Mac, this might be a little bit different. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag just over my subject right here and then let go. So now what this did was it made sure to just select the object that I wanna keep and get rid of the background. This is a really great tool, especially for portrait images with them detecting what you wanna keep in the image and what you wanna get rid of, especially if it's trying to detect a person in that image. So another thing that you'll notice is that there's actually this white right here that's included in these marching ant lines. So what I wanna do is I actually want to get rid of this little white section right here. So what I can then do is I can go back here and click and hold this button right here and then go to quick selection. I can then click on this and I'm going to have this circle right here. Now you can increase and decrease the circle by hitting these brackets, left and right brackets. Okay, that's going to enlarge the circle or decrease it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to zoom in here and I'm gonna to try to get rid of this white section by using this quick selection tool. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller, go in here, and I'm just gonna click and drag. And I actually wanna get rid of this selection. So right now it's a plus, so if I clicked and dragged, it's actually gonna add things. So I wanna do a minus. So in order to get that minus symbol to show up, what you can do is you can hold down Alt, and now it's gonna subtract anything from that selection. So now I'm just gonna select right here, and there we go. It selected most of the image and you can even make it smaller and then really fine tune this if you wanna get right in that armpit. That's looking great. And then again, if you want to go back to the plus icon, it'll default to that, but just in case it's not defaulting to that, like let's say you go here to this quick selection and you all of a sudden clicked on this minus right here and you're stuck on the minus, you can hit shift and that's how you can get back to adding things to the selection. You also have this capability up here of manually selecting this, but I would just memorize the shortcuts Shift and Alt to control where or not you wanna add things to your selection or subtract it. All right, so now that you have your object selected, what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna hit right here, and this is actually going to add a layer mask. Okay, so I'm gonna select that, and now this is looking honestly pretty perfect. Like, I could probably end it here. Now, if you're super detailed and OCD, you can zoom into this by just holding down Alt and hitting the scroll button, and you can try to fine tune this right here. So the reason why I wanted to hit the layer mask is because this allows us to go back and either add things to our image or subtract more. And instead of erasing it and it never coming back, we have the option to either paint it back in or paint it out. 
So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by that. So right now, this is our image. If we click on our layer mask right here, and then we go to this brush, we then can either paint more things in this image black. If I do this, it's actually going to erase part of that image. And then if I paint things more white, it's gonna actually add things to this image. And so let me increase this opacity for you guys to see. So this actually will add things that we got rid of in our image if I paint things white. And if I paint things black, it can get rid of things. So that is the power of layer mask. So what I wanna do with this brush is mess around with the opacity and also the type of brush you're using. I usually like to do a soft round brush just so it's not super precise and then also maybe decrease the opacity, but for this situation, I'm just gonna keep it at 100%. And sometimes I even will do a hard round brush if I want it to just be super sharp and precise lines. So let's try the hard round brush. So I'm just gonna decrease my brush size again by just using the left and right brackets. And now I'm gonna go in here and make sure it's on the color black. So we wanna get rid of more of this picture and I can then Go in here, I can even make this super tiny if I want this really detailed. And then I can get rid of those extra parts that are showing of the wall. Now this is gonna look a little funky if you zoom out. So sometimes what I actually like to do is just kind of manipulate the image a little bit. So what I could do is, is just kind of like chop off some parts of my hair and then increase it a little bit even more. And that way it might look a little bit more natural. So that looks a little nicer in my opinion. You can also, if you have hair like mine for some odd reason, um, that's cool. But if you do, you can always like, you know, try to pretend like these are kind of like ridges here. If you want to do that, just to make it look more natural. That's also an option. And then you can also just check around this image to see if there's any more imperfections that we need to fix up or if you just want to smooth things out. But for the most part, this looks great. And so another thing that I like to do with this image is add all these different effects like smoothing out the skin, maybe getting rid of any acne acne you might have or any freckles. So I can really play around with this image to really perfect it and make it look the way I want it to look. And this is actually usually the technique I use when creating my thumbnails for YouTube. So if you are interested in seeing more tutorials like this on how maybe I clear up my skin or whiten my teeth or make my eyes more vibrant or different tips on how to really dress up your headshot images, let me know in the comments down below. But that is how you can get rid of the background of your image by using Photoshop. It's a little bit more advanced of a tool than using PowerPoint or even the site remove.bg. And also just to remind you guys, once you are happy with this, you can then go to file and then go to export, export as a PNG, and then that will allow you to insert this image into maybe your PowerPoint presentations or any type of work where you wanna put this against a different type of artwork or background or anything it might be. So if you guys did find this video helpful make sure to give a thumbs up and if you could subscribe i would greatly appreciate the support also if you are interested in learning all things about powerpoint i do have a link to that in the description below so make sure to check out for that but without further ado i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i hope to see you guys in future videos thanks